Welcome my friends. Hello, hello. Here we are. A little bit overexposed. That's sorted. Uh, here we are. It is the 12th of August 2020 still. What a year, what a year. New Zealand's just gone back into lockdown for those of you uh, around the world. I've managed to find a reason, a potential, a potential case in uh, Auckland that's put us into level two lockdown in that city, the largest city of well, uh, New Zealand, and the rest of the country's in level two. So they're in level three, sorry, level three lockdown in Auckland. Just found out as I was scrolling through my Facebook feed this morning. Um, as you do, hi Mary, uh, hey Sister Louise. Um, here we are, um, there are some questions written in ahead of time, I'm gonna access them here. Um, mm, 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 mm. <sighs> funny, funny world. Had a feeling it was going to happen. I've been talking about, you know, second lockdown for long enough, even though we've been completely COVID free. Hey, Sister Leslie. Um, so now all of a sudden we're not completely COVID free anymore so that we can have a lockdown right before an election. Go figure. Uh, what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to find my questions. Stop thinking about lockdown and uh, anger with governments and controlling mechanisms and dark agendas that are running out of control. Um, here I am on live, so that's good. And here come my questions. Jane's written in as well. I've got lots of questions. I'll put a love there as well. We'll see how we go. We'll get through all these. I've got half an hour to get through now. Four good questions. Yeah, it's a good question too from Jane. Um, well, I better move through a little bit more quickly than normal. All right, I missed that. There's one for... Hey, Jane. There's one... F no. Yeah, it is all bizarre. There is one from Sylvie, exactly. There's one from uh, lots of people. So I'm gonna start with Sylvie's. Um, Sylvie says she's really thankful for the Bright Light Client Attraction process. For those of you who don't know, I have relaunched. Hey, Gary. It's also planned. Lockdown is also planned, Gary. That's what we're talking about. In fact, I don't know if you've heard this morning, but New Zealand's back in lockdown. Auckland level three, uh, the rest of the country level two. Um, anyway, let's. Um, I'm going to try and concentrate on answering my questions. So I've relaunched relaunched um, relaunched the Bright Light Client Attraction process for those of you who are looking to get out and be more available to uh, share your services and or products um, with more and more of your best clients. So um, there's a post about that above and I'll probably post a few more times since I've just put it out there. I've just put it on with a very, very, uh, I believe, very attractive payment plan to make it much more accessible to people. So you can check that out. You can also have a clarity call with me to talk about it if you are unsure. Um, and I'm gonna move forward with that. So anyway, Sylvie said she's very thankful for that process because Sylvie's been doing this course for a reasonable time. I used to have a community outside of Facebook with my clients. It's a little hard to get traffic. I plan to move my group to Facebook and rebrand my offer to target a new niche, as I told you, around creativity and purpose. Not targeting entrepreneurs, just people like me, uh, creative for the fun of it as a self-help tool from the heart. Now it's a hobby, it's not for spiritual business owners. What price do you suggest for around 12 MP3s or 30 minutes uh, of 30 minutes and two videos of one hour? as a workshop. Uh, so before we get to the price, let's talk about some of the interesting points that you've raised here, Sister Sylvie. Um, having a group, having a group off the Facebook platform is fine if you can drive traffic to it um, via other more mainstream social media platforms, e.g. 
Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, if that's where your clients are hanging out, wherever your clients hang out, TikTok for that matter, if they hang out on TikTok, I don't know, I've got no, no idea about TikTok and Snapchat and all those other ones, I've 747, so far over the top of my head, just trying to get myself right height in the frame. Um, the point being that you don't necessarily need to move your delivery platform or where you host people to Facebook uh, just because there's more traffic on Facebook. What is good about Facebook is if you're delivering a course where there is, or you or you'll have a group where you want to be updating them more regularly and being a little bit more um, interactive in the moment, then Facebook's great because most people have it on their phone and when you send them something, if they're in your group, they're going to get a notification. Like this group works very well on Facebook because a lot of people will be watching exactly this bit of content in their regular feed, right? So they haven't actually consciously gone, oh, let's check out what's happening on the Bright Light, uh, Bright Light Beings group and gone into the group to see what new stuff is there. So the great thing about Facebook is if you've got a group that you want to interact with more regularly, you can do that because it will show up in their regular feed. And many people get on Facebook multiple times a day just to check out what's going on in their feed. And then you can you basically can serve them by doing that and you can maintain an ongoing relationship. If you are just planning to deliver content, you don't need to move your group or the, the way of delivering the content to, to any mainstream social media platform and it might be good to have it in something that's a little bit more uh, robust and you don't have to worry about Facebook going down, which it might do, I don't want to cast aspersions, but um, you know, um, that, that, that's a point. So the so just understand why we use Facebook and it's to basically be able to get in front of people without them having to consciously choose to do so. Um, you can then grab their attention and take them to another group if um, that's where the value is for them. They will uh, happily go there. So that's one thing. Um, so just so you don't move a group for the wrong reason. Um, so I want to talk to this point around this idea that not targeting entrepreneurs is going to lower your price. Uh, I'm trying to get out of this idea myself, <laughs> and I'm encouraging you know all of us to get out of this idea that we value things based on how much it can um, it can earn us, right? That that's where the value is for people, and it's, sure, that's a very easy value to point out to people, you know, the ROI, the return on investment, you buy my course, I will make you this much money, right? And obviously, you're going to make them more money than they just spent buying your course. That's a very easy equation for people. But I think today, there are a lot of people who value their own personal growth and their own happiness, and they're willing to pay reasonably well to have something that doesn't have a financial ROI they're willing to pay for something that makes them feel good, makes them feel complete, makes them feel grounded, um, and all those other happy type vibrations, they're willing to pay for that. So the, it's very hard to put, you know, a logical price on, on something that helps someone boost their creativity for the fun of creativity, I would encourage you to feel into what price feels most appropriate in your heart and not to get too caught up in, well, because there's no ROI, it has to be cheap. Um, there's a lot of value for people to have um, coaching and support and inspiration around getting into their creativity because creativity really is fundamental to a lot of people finding their true happiness. And it's very hard for them to be happy if they're just concerned with the logic of doing the world well and, you know, succeeding on the ladder and earning money, right? A lot of people are realizing that earning money, um, especially over the last few months um, with this whole thing, this whole thing that's sort of one of the benefits of this whole COVID experience is that it's broken a lot of people out of the normal consumerist model of of thinking that their happiness lies in earning money and consuming, buying more goods, right? That your happiness is in what you can buy with the money that you earn. 
and real and, and more people finding that what's really important to them is human connection and relationship and their own connection with themselves and the happiness is coming from within hey sister luna hey brother lewis you go sylvia i can vouch for how much progress you have made working with matt montara thank you in my honest opinion the most advanced student <laughs> i tend not to rank my students but anyway um awesome lewis <laughs> thank you uh and i know sylvie's awesome and she's done awesome as well hey sister stephanie um so hopefully that's answered that question let's move on uh sister Zena said would love to hear your thoughts on the best ways to connect with own with one own with one's own internal guidance and clarity relax relax is the best way to connect with your own internal guidance and so much to ask my son jeff was okay I'll, I'll try and get back to that brother lewis otherwise we do have our q a um for the group happening on sunday but I'll, I'll try and get to that i've got four questions ahead of you and then i will jump in well only three questions now and i am intending to bring this in in not too much over half an hour anyway so Zena asks what's the best way to connect with your own internal guidance and clarity the the number one most important thing to do to connect with your own internal guidance and clarity is to relax now so the next question comes, um, how, how do we relax? And for me, the mo it's about consistency, consistency with choosing to break out of the stress response, which I find deep breathing works really, really well. Conscious deep breathing. So intentional, con bringing your conscious intent to what you are achieving as you take some deep breaths is very, very powerful the deep breathing itself we know physiologically helps to re reduce the stress response when you add in the intention in your mind that you are consciously relaxing into inspired clarity then that's exactly what will be happening so as you inhale you feel yourself expanding to receive more of yourself as you exhale you're releasing the stressors out of your life <sighs> and finding a deep connection with your own inner being which is your guidance the other thing that's really important, so one, if you want to connect with your guidance, you have to be relaxed because being stressed and trying to connect with your guidance just does not work, right? The more that you stress, the more that your mind predominates and your mind is not your internal guidance. Your mind is full of subconscious thoughts and programming and stuff that it's picking up from the airwaves, right? Your mind is like a radio receiver. And when you're stressed, the, the dial gets turned down to the stress channels and the stress channels aren't fun places to be. <laughs> They're just not. And the more that you relax, the dial can get turned up to bandwidths that are in higher vibrations, love, joy, you know, inspiration, connection, uh, collaboration, all of those higher bandwidths require us to be more loose in our energetic field. Um, yep, yeah, quite possible we need, do need to get ready for civil unrest, Brother Lewis, um, but how do we do that? Get ready for it. Um, sharpen your pitchfork or find an energetic center where you can trust your intuitive guidance in any one moment and don't get caught up reacting triggered from the stress and the um, fear because fear triggers stress and then you react to it in ways that are not generally for your highest and best good the instantaneous reaction to get out of the way of something dangerous is valid and is very important. But the ongoing mentalization of fear-based anxiety thoughts and then trying to cognate as to what the best action to take generally never works very well. So understand there's a difference. There's a reason we have stress reactions. It's for instantaneous safety. But the ongoing process and the chronic stress just does not work to achieve our best outcome. So we need to have techniques to de-stressify ourselves, to de-stressify, that's a good statement, ourselves so that we can connect with our deeper awareness. Now, the second thing I want to say is after we've relaxed is to be an allowance that your guidance will always be subtle. Don't allow yourself to get stressed thinking that your guidance isn't obvious enough and you can't be sure. You will never be sure from your mind that you're getting guidance that is accurate. 
I'll say it again, you will never be sure in your mind, and I'm going to talk to this because I know Sister Louise asked the question along a similar line of how my life has changed, I want to talk to this point. You will never be sure with your mind that you're getting accurate guidance. You just don't get that proof with it. The guidance that comes from this very relaxed state, this internal guidance, doesn't come with an argument. It doesn't come with proof. It doesn't come with the whole plan. It just shows you the next step to take and you get the choice whether you trust and take it or not. You can't generally have a conversation with, and this is my experience anyway, you don't get the opportunity to have a conversation with it to get all of the reasons why. When you start getting into why should I do that and, and how's it gonna work for me, you are basically gonna access your subconscious mind and you're gonna pull up a whole heap of fairy tale, right? Not guidance anymore. Now you're entering into programming and you will try and justify it. Basically, you're engaging your mind and your mind will go looking through your memory banks, which includes all sorts of stuff that you've read and heard and um, seen on television or in movies to try and prove why you should or shouldn't do what your inter internal guidance just told you to do. You will confuse yourself and you can get very, very deluded into thinking you know the reasons why it should happen and shouldn't happen, but most of it is delusion. So, so when you're accessing your internal guidance, it's much more empowered to trust what you feel, the inkling that you get to go, even though it's subtle, and do it. And then enjoy the consequences. Enjoy the consequences. If you trust that whatever you choose to do from internal guidance is going to serve you, it will. Even if it's not the outcome that your mind wanted, even if it's the outcome that your ego didn't want, right? Oh, that's uncomfortable. That's not what I wanted to have happen. Oh, I must have made a mistake, right? No, you didn't make a mistake. You didn't make a mistake. You are going through a process that is going to get you to where you want to ultimately get to. You just need to be willing to trust that it's not going to be a straight line of plain sailing. It's not going to be improvement, 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 improvement. That's not how evolution takes place. That's not how ascension takes place. That's not how your enlightenment is going to take place. It is going to be messy. It's going to be multidimensional. It is going to be very confusing for your mind. So you have to be willing to trust that if your intent is to move into a more expansive state, then that is exactly what's going to happen if you are willing to work from that space of trust and just intentionally take your steps and allow yourself to receive the outcomes from a space of faith that this is serving me even though it's not comfortable. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But ultimately, the more that you do that, the more that you trust your internal guidance in that way, the more you will be guided in powerful ways. The more you will have good outcomes from that because it builds a level of flow. It builds a, 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 a channel of intuitive guidance. When you just start really trusting it and stop going back and judging it in hindsight and then working out whether you made a mistake or didn't make a mistake and then wanting not to make a mistake next time you get internal guidance is to act, you are diminishing your ability to really just act from internal guidance and you're diminishing your ability to get the best, highest vibrational internal guidance. Great transition of connecting with our higher knowing. Translation, exactly. Thank you, Louise. And I'm about to start talking. I've learned we're under psychic. I've learned we're under psychic this last weekend attack, did you mean? And explains why my son Saturday got involved in this fight. Um, yeah, well, you could call it, I think you're trying to say psychic attack, um, Louis, but we're basically, there's a lot of mental energy out there in the world that affects people's psyche. And if you are allow yourself to f flow in what is coming from outside of ourselves, um, then you are going to be influenced, right? So the point is, is the more that you relax out of fear, the less the psychic influence, the psyops, right, affect you, the less that you can be led when you are relaxed and connected to your own light. When you consciously spend time intentionally connecting to your own light, from a space of confidence, so that this confidence ripples out through you, you become much more immune to the psyops, right? The psychic attack that mass media is working on, along with a lot of purification energies and the dark agenda and all of that. It's all real, it's all happening. 
It doesn't need to affect you though if you choose to stay strong in yourself. If you get angry that these people are trying to do this, then you're going to buy into it. If you start trying to fight them, you are going to lose. I'll guarantee you. The way to uh, achieve our agenda, the way to achieve our best outcome is to just sidestep out of this play. It doesn't mean being in denial. It doesn't mean sticking our head in the sand, but it does mean staying very strong to our own light and not getting drawn into judgment that they are wrong for what they're doing. They're doing what they do because they believe it's right. The dark agenda believes this is the right thing to do from their perspective. Our perspective, now that we have much more light and available to us to actually work from our perspective, is to step into the light and to express it strongly on the planet. And that's what we need to do. We don't need to defeat them in order to win for ourselves, right? We don't need to defeat them. We just need to not submit to them, which means staying strong in our own light and not buying into not buying into the fight, not buying into the division, not buying into the narratives that are being portrayed at the moment. The, the way the dark is working at the moment is they're putting out lots of controlled opposition to keep dividing people up. They're, you know, they're promoting both the wearing of masks and the not wearing of masks. The dark agenda is doing both, right? to basically keep the population divided on yet another division point, right? Black versus white, man versus woman, red versus blue, mask wearers versus not mask wearers, right? Conspiracy theorists versus, the, right? They're creating division. The way, the only way that we're going to have our agenda met, our outcome met, is to stand strong in alignment with our outcome and not buy into the divisions, not to buy into the dichotomies that are being very greatly publicized out there, right? It's almost like we're being guilted into having to buy in and have an opinion on all these things. And it's fine to have an opinion, but if you start fighting anything that opposes your opinion, you are part of the problem. You are part of the problem as soon as you start fighting any opinion that is not your own. And I don't care what opinion you have and I don't care what opinion you're opposing. When you're opposing an opinion in a fight-like way, you are feeding it and you're feeding division. And that is not what we need now. We need to come together in unity. And we can only do that when we find unity within ourselves and just connect into who we are choosing to be. Exactly, Sister Louise said. It's only getting wilder because they are getting their backs up against the wall and from this point get snarly. Yeah, you know, like a dog. When a dog is feeling threatened, it starts yapping and that's exactly what's happening with the dark agenda right now because the consciousness is rising and they can't stop that. So they're trying all sorts of very, very outlandish and very, very extreme measures to keep people under control. To keep people in fear, basically, and divided. Divided we fall, united we will stand. So I want to move on now because Louise also asked a great question here. We'd love to hear you talk about the difference you experienced in the world of Matt Andrews since Mantara arrived for you. What occurred for you that connected you to this particular experience? And how do you feel supported as a result of this regard of this reunion? Okay, this answer might disappoint a lot of you, but I'm going to give it because it needs to be stated. Not much has changed in Matt's life since connecting with Mantara, and everything has changed. So, what do I mean? Everything has changed in that I now feel that I have strong purpose. I now feel much more confident in myself. And But this has been a slow thing, right? So, when Mantara arrived in my life back in 2013, when I finally became conscious of this connection. It's been there forever, right? I'm part of my higher self is part of Mantara. So, but when Matt became consciously aware of Mantara and I started channeling light language and all of that, um, what changed was I found a purpose, but that I, right, but, but what didn't change is I don't have a voice in my head telling me what to do in any particular situation. I don't have confidence that any choice that Matt makes is going to work. I don't have a, a natural sense of peace that um, now everything's okay because Mantara is with me. That is not natural and it is not just there, it didn't just arrive. It's a slow progression of me 
working through my stuff. Still, my, my fears came up probably more intently than ever once I started connecting with Montari. Exactly, 2013, 2014, 2015 were very, very hard times for me in allowing this to arise, right? Because it was here and I was speaking light language, but all of my fears and all of my contraction around whether this was right, whether this was safe, was very, very pertinent. And I had to pull myself kicking and screaming through it. Like Brother Lewis remembers, because he was there on the very first Telesummit call that I did in 2015, right? Um, I, I thought that was going to be a complete and utter failure. I didn't have any confidence coming from Mantara that, don't worry, this is all going to be great. They don't just send me thoughts that anesthetize me or, or help me step out of my own process of purification, purification, the fears that I have, the, the discordance I have, the pain and the trauma that I have in my field left over from the past. So while they do apply, supply a level of passion because I really feel connected with them and I really feel that I want to express their light out on the planet, I feel a real draw to do that, they don't make it easy. There's no just easiness. Now, why I tell you this is not to get you deluded, uh, is not to is not to right, take you off the path and think, well, what's the point then of connecting with my spirit more and more? But it's to remind you that you're probably more connected than you think. And if you're waiting to feel that all of a sudden all of your problems have been lifted off your shoulder, so now you can um, believe that you are connected to spirit, you're going to be waiting a long time, in my opinion. And I've talked to a lot of my you know colleagues and peers who work, and you know I work with a lot of people who are still quite successful you know, out there as facilitators themselves and they come to me because they enjoy the light language experience that I can create, right? Not that I'm more advanced than them, I can just create a space that they appreciate. So I do get to talk to a lot of facilitators reasonably regularly and they have all of their problems as well. So the point, my friends, is not to diminish your ability thinking that you mustn't be there yet because you've still got all these problems. You mustn't be there yet because you've still got anxiety running in your mind. Because I'm here to tell you that a lot of very, very good facilitators still have anxieties running in their mind. They still have problems that they're struggling to work through. So um, <clears throat> I'm glad. I'm glad it makes sense and it's good to know. So, So the point is, is allow yourself to go through the growing pains and truly believe that you are capable of being a facilitator as you are right now. You are capable of influencing people. You are capable of standing on your platform. You are capable of doing all of that. And you don't need to wait for some magical connection with source that feels really beyond because I don't have that. You know, when I channel, there we go. And I shut down Facebook, but here it's back. Um, you don't have to wait till you have some immense imaginary <laughs> experience to believe that you are now connected and you are now it's now valid for you to go out and share your message. You are ready, my friends, to start sharing your message right now. You are ready to start being the being that you be in a more expansive way. You don't need to have some magical experience to prove to you that now what you've got to say is valid or worthy or whatever else. Um, <clears throat> so please, because it's not like that, you know, for me, there is, you know, as I was about to say, when I channel, it doesn't feel like I'm possessed. It doesn't feel like I'm being, um, I've got all sorts of light going on. It looks like I am possessed right now. Um, I don't have, it doesn't feel like there's anything special happening. I just allow myself to speak without thinking. It's a very, just feels like I'm a little bit drunk to be completely honest. Um, but I'm not diminishing what I do. The point is I'm, I'm trying to elevate what you do, Right. And, it, and don't keep looking for some magical experience to prove that what you've got to offer is valid. Okay, I intend to answer Jane as well. I know I'm right on, uh, well, I was a little bit late getting here. <clears throat> Claire Cognian, exactly, Lewis. We just know, we just know that what we're doing is valid and it's very hard to prove that, right? So we, can't, we don't get any proof that what we feel to do is valid, right? There's no voices in our head. There's no, I don't get any, given any visions. I don't get any clarification in that way. I am just willing to trust. I talk a lot about relaxing into trust and that's because that has been my pathway. Relax and trust and act on what you feel to do. I'm more aware when I'm triggered. So asking myself deeper questions when I feel reaction, I feel it in my body and I'm, Ah, oh, Denise, come on. Let me 
you see more. And I'm trying to let it pass through instead of it lingering or ruminating in my head. Yep. So relax and don't, when you say you're trying to allow it to pass through, give it as much time as it needs. So let go of trying to push it through because that's the difference. Although I know it's not fun to have anxious thoughts in our mind. It's not fun to have dense or uneasy feelings in our emotional body. But the more that we fight against them, the more that they stay. The more that we judge them as wrong and want to be, want to be free of them, the more that they stay. The more that we can relax into acceptance that they're part of our process of release, part of our process of purification, part of our process of ascension, and we find an acceptance, then all of a sudden we kind of lose track of time and they're gone. <laughs> right? Things move. When we relax, things change. Um, it's kind of like, you know, when we can have a good sleep cycle, a lot of stuff can happen because our body and our energy field gets a great chance to relax during that sleep cycle. Um, and we can do that consciously as well. Um, so Sister Jane wrote in, and I'm going to answer this quickly, how to determine the difference between anxiety caused by thoughts, experiences, as opposed to shifting energy, or is it the same thing? I'm confused. Well, it's not the same thing, but is there any difference in how you respond to it? That's the, diff that's the important thing, because... I, I get it. You think that if you know the difference, then you're going to be able to figure it out and, and solve it more quickly. But the truth is, it's the same medicine for both experiences. It doesn't matter whether the anxiety is arising as part of something that you're releasing or the anxiety is arising because you've been triggered by an experience that you just had and now you've got thoughts ruminating in your head. It's pretty much the same thing. So pretty much the same thing, but it, it's slightly different because sometimes you know, when, we, when we've been triggered by something externally, we now have an excuse, which in some ways makes it harder to move past it, in some way makes it easier to move past it. Depends on what you need to relax. Some people can relax when they go, huh, there's no reason for feeling this, and then they can relax and let it go. Some people can relax when they go, oh, I know what caused this, now I can relax. <laughs> So people are different. Some people get very stressed when they don't know what has caused the anxiety that they're feeling, right? And other people get very stressed when they realize that the anxiety that they're feeling has been, or they think that it's been caused by the government putting us into lockdown again, or the people next door aren't wearing a mask and they're not socially isolating or whatever, right? Pick a, pick a scenario, any scenario, we can use it to trigger stress response in us. The point is, Sister Jane and everyone, what you do about it, because even if you're not sure why you're feeling anxiety, whether it is because of an actual experience you've had in the external world or whether it is just something that's arising from internal, and most of the time it's a combination. Most of the time it's something we've experienced in the external that has triggered stuff to arise from internal. So now we have both scenarios going on at once. But the point is for any three of those things, either the first one, absolute, second one, absolute, or what's most likely is a combination of the two happening, the process is the same. Consciously take some deep breaths. Allow yourself to find acceptance that you are having anxious thoughts in your mind or the feeling of anxiety slash stress in your body. And choose to relax into knowing that whatever has caused it, it will pass and you will find clarity as you allow yourself to take your attention off that as being a wrongness and bring yourself back to the fact that no matter what is caused that you're going to move through it in a more expansive way as you choose to consciously relax and find allowance and trust that ultimately, inherently, you are safe. Exactly, Denise. When we have the <laughs> realization, oh, I'm human and I'm having a human experience, then um, we can kind of laugh, right? Exactly. We can just kind of laugh the fact that we're all humans having human experiences and it's a very messy experience and we're not here to perfect our reactions. We're not here to perfect how we respond to the world. It doesn't matter. No one is judging you. God source universe isn't keeping a scorecard on how you're doing here. It's not about getting it right so that you can complete the mission and get off the planet. It's not. Getting it right is basically relaxing into enjoying the experience. That's what getting it right is. Not about following all of the rules. It's not about being like a Zen master. It's not about um, awakening other people. It's not about any level of quote-unquote karmic balancing. 
yeah, karma exists. Yes, it's just basically guilt energy in your field. And the more that you relax, the more that you will naturally clear that. The more that you relax, the more that you will find forgiveness for judgmental react uh, responses that you've had to experiences in the past. And you will set yourself free when you choose to relax and allow yourself to go through the process. Awesome, Denise. I'm glad that explanation has worked for you. Um, it's common. It's common for all of us, right? I know Jane might judge herself as having, you know, higher levels of anxiety than, than most people that she knows, but that's only a self-judgment, and it's only because she's hyper-aware to her own anxiety. Um, the truth is, anxiety is a very, very normal human behavior, especially in the current situations that we have in our society. Our society has trained us to be anxious because that's how they control us. They've trained us to be easily triggered into these responses because that's how they control us. Um, it's time for us basically to relax out of being controlled. It's a time for us to relax into being sovereign. And it's time for us to relax into self acceptance as the foundation to self-appreciation and then self-love, self-acceptance, accept that we're human, accept that none of us are doing this in a myth mythically perfect way, but yet we're all perfect in how we're doing it because we are all being an expression of God's source universe that we came here to be. <sighs> we all feel abnormal, Jane. This whole collection of 700 odd people in the bright light beings community is a community of people who feel abnormal and the truth is that's a fucking gift if we were to all be normal we would not be here shining the light onto this planet and helping to raise the vibration so much normal is asleep and compliant at the moment we are abnormal while that has provoked provoked us with a lot of anxiety because everyone wants to we're herd animals humans are herd animals we want to fit in with the herd we just have to find our own selective herd because we don't fit in with the main herd and that is just part of the brilliance of who we are so it's not that we're you know i don't want to say that we're special and that we're important and all the rest of it because we're just at a different stage to the majority of the people on the planet and our time will come and we will have left this planet and they will get the chance to be special. It's kind of like being the fucking in the last year at school when you're the seniors, right? It feels important, but you know your time's going to go and you're going to go to the next school where you'll be a junior, all right? You go to university where you're a, a freshman or whatever, right? We go through these stages in life where we reach a level of pinnacle based on our maturity because we've gone through a process. Uh, but that doesn't mean we're any better than anyone else or anywhere else along the process because everyone gets their turn. And it's the same. All of the souls who are currently asleep right now will get their turn in another time, space and dimension to be a leader. But right now, you and I and all of us, we're in the position where we are leaders. We're waking up from being persecuted for a long time. And so <clears throat> it's just a matter of finding acceptance that we're not supposed to feel that we fit in with normal and yet we do have communities where we are very much appreciated and very much in alignment with other beings. And it's just a matter of finding those communities to help us find more confidence in ourselves and to step into our brilliance as a conduit of light onto this planet, right? Get out of your mind that you need to be special inside, that you need to understand all of this stuff, that you need to think a lot, that you need to have this mental wisdom that you know what to do. None of us know what to do. I don't know what to do. I got on this call not knowing what I was gonna say, and yet I've said it. That's the point, right? All of us are like this. We just act in the moment based on what we feel to do, and everything is perfect. Yeah, we're all just growing because nothing stays still for long, right? Nature doesn't stay still. The cosmos doesn't stay still. Energy does not stay still. Energy disappears when it stays still. Energy is movement. That's what energy is. Everything is moving. Nothing is constant. Nothing stays still. Nothing is a straight line. Everything is very dynamic and very organic. Just the way we like it. Unpredictable. The mind hates it. But our heart loves it. So connect with your heart and love this messy life even though your mind is freaking out that nothing is control, nothing is predictable, and nothing is the way that you quote-unquote want it to be. 
<laughs> relax and enjoy my friends much much love again yet again i'm sure i've gone over time yeah by about 10 minutes much love bye for now if you want more help reach out i'm here to help you guys right don't think that matt's too busy to help me it's not the truth if you're interested in that bright light client attraction process check it out there is a post either above or below this probably below at this stage in the bright light being feed and i will be posting some more um, there'll be some emails going out about this because i am very excited to be offering this at a place that i think is much more um achievable for most people financially and and expectationally right i put a longer time frame on how the course is um delivered so that you don't get so freaked out thinking that you're not doing good enough out of them that you need to it's a lifelong process my friends and we're here to look after you for as long as it takes much love bye for now namaste how do i finish i hit this button here bye